All right, and we're back, episode number 59 of the Daru Strong Podcast. I'm your host, Phil Daru. Today, we have the footwork king, Rashad Whitfield. Now, Rashad works with the who's who in the NFL. He is a biomechanics specialist. He works movement specialties specifically for football athletes who are looking to up their game and work on their footwork to get them better at their position. So before we get into that, I have to shout out the sponsor, VivoBarefoot.com. Vivo Barefoot, go check them out. That's the shoe that I've been wearing in all of my YouTube videos and also around my Instagram. I know you guys have been asking me. It's a minimalistic shoe that helps with full foot functionality. You're going to help strengthen up the intrinsic muscles of your feet, but also, again, like I said, it's kind of stylish. So check them out, VivoBarefoot.com. Use my discount code DeRueStrong. Now, let's get on to the podcast. Mind somewhere else to keep going. That little voice in your head is trying to stop you from getting to where you want to be. Be successful and keep moving forward. With your host and world renowned strength and conditioning coach, Phil Delru. Rashad, man, thanks so much for joining me. I know that you have a busy schedule. Uh, the good thing about this is that with the podcast, I get to talk to individuals that I want to talk to, so I'm a little bit selfish in that way. <laughs> um, I found you actually, yeah, I found you, I want to say through a YouTube video, and I was um, I was like looking at some footwork drills, and just be being an athlete myself, play, I played for Alabama State, uh, played college football, played high school football. Uh, just watching you work with the athletes that you're working with and doing the things that you're doing, man, it's, I, and I'm, I'm a guy that is very particular on who I actually follow and who I like to work with. Yeah. And man, I'm gonna tell you, you're doing the right things, and I like what you're doing for sure. You're, 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 you're honestly one of those player coaches. You know what I mean? And you still have that athletic ability. You still have that footwork. I see. Um, but I did want to ask you, um, and I know your background a little bit. I know you, you're from Houston, and you coach there. But what got you started in doing the things that you're doing right now? Oh, I, uh, you know, football is king down here in Texas, man. So I grew up playing football with the dreams of going to NFL. I just battled a bunch of injuries, Phil. And, you know, I studied uh, – I was a kinesiology major at U of H, man. And then I just kept getting injured and injured and injured when I walked on the U of H. And you start to learn about the body, how the body works, and how it's all about, like, just the movements. You know, I realized, like, if I would have moved a little bit different, I probably would been a lot more healthy on the football field. It's crazy because some of my, some of my injuries are all just for movement. Yeah. Uh, my bad cut landed wrong. Um, you know, uh, uh, tackle roll one way. The defense, I, mean, I rolled away with a tackle. The other guy rolled the opposite way, which, which hurt my knee. So uh, about two years ago, man, I uh, just, yeah, man, I, I was always, I was always doing like, you know, working with some little kids and stuff like that. And then, uh, man, it just, it just took off, man. I think I've been doing I've been doing it about 10 solid years, but 2014 is probably when I really, really took off and um, start training, you know, a lot of Texans and guys. And, and now it's kind of just work with everybody, you know, <laughs> but I'm really, I'm really specific though, you know, like, um, but a lot of the stuff that I do is geared towards their position. Yeah. So every movement that I do with these athletes or movements that they got to do on the field. So everything functional, functional, uh, you can apply it. Uh, mm -hmm. I just run into the problem that, you know, like, for instance, I train a uh, guy, Xavier, back there. I train Xavier Howard. You know, whenever he plays C.D. Lamb, you know, I train C.D. as well. So, you know, I work a lot of man press release, and I work, I'll, I'll work a lot of man press coverage. So, but it's crazy because I got a lot of them, man. I got at least eight receivers and eight DBs that are actually got to play each other, man. So, yeah, I supply them both with the best tools. You know, mm -hmm. toolbox, especially for receiver, but defensive back, I got to get them guys moving in reverse. So it's harder. Um, but uh, it's, it's not cookie cutter. Um, I, I guess I see things a little bit different, Phil. Yeah. So, you know, um, when I watch football, I watch movement, you know, and uh, a lot of times you watch guys on the football field, a lot of times that uh, 
it's a movement issue. It's not a play issue. It's like a movement issue. Somebody's moving quicker than the other. Somebody got leverage on the other. It's all about movement. They won't. They don't tell you that. They, they tell you it's about speed and power, but it's usually just little detailed steps, man. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I did want to ask you. But, uh, I did want to ask you a couple of things. Hold on one second, man. I didn't mean to cut you off, but how many athletes are, are you? Good? How many athletes are you currently working with on a daily basis? Because it seems like you're you're working with like the the entire NFL, from what I see, you know, on, on Instagram and on YouTube. Just about, man. I think the only person team I don't have anybody on is uh, everybody on the Raiders. I don't think. Oh, really? But um, but um. Yeah, but so then our off season, everything is broken down into positions. So uh, my pros are all one on one. So I have about fifty pros that I train. Um, but then I got my, you know, all of May I got my college athletes. So because they got a, they, they only get a month off. So uh, I'm probably averaging about. I got a couple. Of high, I got my high school kids in the evening time. So probably about five athletes a day. You know, two in the morning, usually about three in the evening time. Yeah, but my pros are all in the morning time. You know, so I work with some guys. I try to get them guys in the mid midday in the heat. It's hot, hot, and I feel like I feel like a sauna. But uh, some of these guys are playing in L.A. You know what I mean? So L.A. got the good weather, you know, good air. So it it it's harder to breathe down here. Uh, a lot of them, a lot of them have a hard time breathing down here. So once it gets to, once the season starts, man, it's really good conditioning for them. Uh, they you know they they drop weight. Um. But it's just it's just better training conditions. I think the harder the harder the better when it comes to you know when it comes to the season time. Ninety five degree heat, eighty yeah. percent humidity. Man, it's hard to breathe. So gotcha. But um, a lot of them like it. They don't they complain about it, but you know they pull through with it. So I wanted to ask you, what does like I know a lot of people say, all right, he has good footwork, right? And a lot of coaches, especially skills, uh, technical coaches, or, or you know. Uh, positions coaches will be like, oh, he's got great footwork. What does that actually mean to have great footwork? Like, uh, the, you know, feet, your feet are your, is the foundation of football. You know, um, great footwork is an athlete I see in my eyes. An athlete with great footwork is a guy an athlete with quick discipline and controlled feet. You know, some of these feet guys' footwork is really erratic, or erratic man, and they're, they're not disciplined all over the place. That's why you see a lot of them guys get stuck. You see a lot of them guys take a little bit too many too many steps to get out of the break, uh, too many steps to get the hips turned, um, uh, or they they don't they pick their feet up too high when making a cut. You play running back, so a lot of quick, precise guys that you see with quick, efficient, precise, controlled, disciplined feet. That's what I mean at, at their position. Mm-hmm. You know, everything has to look smooth and efficient, uh, and they got to be quick. And you know, and it, it can't to be it can't be too many steps. So. With me, I think anything over two steps is too many. So as you take – as any athlete that I have take two steps, it better be two steps going forward, two steps going lateral, two steps going to the side, but I always got to progress to something else. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay. So, like, yeah. there's, a, there's a couple of things here because I found you through your nickname, right, the Footwork King. So how did you get the name the Footwork King? Yeah. Uh, one of my coaches uh, together uh, years ago, he was just like, man, I need a name. He was like, man, you're the king of footwork, footwork king. And that was it, Phil. That was it. I'm like, all right. <laughs> nice, man. man nice. Look at that. Now, now that's now I can't change it. Yeah. It, it was it was real quick. And he was just like, God, it's crazy that how, how it was that fast. And I just jumped on it. I didn't argue with him. I just made it my Twitter handle. I mean, I fake my uh, Instagram handle. And yeah. ever since then, man, that's what ESPN says and NFL Network says, man, and my pro. Uh, so it's just, yeah. <laughs> You know, so it. Uh, That's cool, man. That's cool. I don't think it's gonna go like take off. I don't think it's gonna take off like it did, though. Nah, you. I knew I was good at what I did. I, I knew I was good at my work. Phil, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know it would take off. Like the name would just take off, just be something. You know. Yeah. No, nah, man. Congratulations on all your success. Yeah. Though, for sure, man. So uh, for for when you get new athletes in. Right. Uh, let's say, for instance, you're just starting out with them. What are the main things that you're looking for when you're working with an athlete um, from a, from an agility and quickness on the field standpoint? Uh, what, what, what level are we looking at? Like, um, yeah, that's a good question. I would say let's let's start with let's start with go with high school and then college and then pro. OK, you, you'll be amazed, Phil, how many pros don't have footwork. You'll be like, if, man, 
you'd be like, man, how did this dude make it to the NFL? Like, if I sat down and broke everything down to you, if you came to one of my sessions, you'd be like, damn, dude was the first round draft pick? You know, it just uh, athleticism, you know? <laughs> but then you see him not really rise to the cream to the – you don't see him really rising yet, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's kind of where I come in. But the first thing I look at, you know, you get a high school kid, a lot of them, they don't know how to run. They're unbalanced, uncoordinated. So I do a lot of stuff that's worked on balance and coordination, you know? A lot of them got to pick their feet up off the ground so high just to move a, dif- a different direction. You know, when you play a football field, the grass isn't hot, you know? So I'm, I'm teaching my kid, you know, just skin their feet on the turf to make the move, you know? As long as your feet's off the ground, you're not going anywhere. Um, but a lot of them are just unbalanced, very, very unbalanced. Uh, their hips are stiff, um, uh, heavy-footed, um, can't change direction. Uh, man, it, it's – you'd be amazed, man, how many I, I get. And, and I kind of just fix them up, you mm-hmm. know? But I fix my guys up as we go. And then once I get them going, you know, working on change direction, working on foot speed – working on, um, uh, you know, quick hips, working on lateral and directional movement. Then mm-hmm. we start to work into – I start to work into what position they play. Mm-hmm. You know, but I do I do all that stuff first for when I get my brand-new client athletes. And, and it's the same with colleges. Colleges, they lift, lift, lift so much, man. So they don't work agility. Everything is just based on, you know, strength. Yeah. It's really strength and conditioning over there. So mm-hmm. I'll get guys right. Like some of my guys I've been training since high school, I'll work with them – when they get to college, it's kind of like, man, they got to come back and relearn stuff. You know what I mean? They don't get much break. They don't get a lot of breaks up there in college. So they just don't, they don't keep, they're not able to keep up with the stuff we do down here in college. So, um, but I just kind of, well, with college, a lot of they're kind of, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's now when they get, when I get my college out, you know, that's the tough part about it, you know, but I, I can do it. I do it all the time. It's just sometimes some of my boys don't need to wait to exercise on them, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's, not, that's why when you watch guys in the NFL field, from college to NFL, you watch you, a lot of them guys are not as big as they were in college. Yeah. You know, they don't lift like that no more. They're, they're, they're more functional, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Injury prevention. Yeah. Unless you play D-lineman or O-line. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure it's it's a different way of training when you're looking at you. You talk about uh, position specific, like with your D line. Do you have any O linemen? You have some tight ends. I know that, but um, as far as like linemen and skills positions, like there's obviously a difference when you're talking about yeah, like uh, footwork. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I got I got quite a few high school linemen, you know, and everything high school O linemen do feel or or just left, right, and back. You know, uh, lateral and directional. You know, uh, uh, defensive backs are, are, are a harder position because everything they do is in reverse. <laughs> so that's probably the most complex position running back footwork is DB because they got to mimic. DB got to mimic a run. You got to be able to, you know, kick slide, pedal, get to a shuffle, cross a run, you know, do all that while looking at that dude running full speed at you. So, yeah. Because he might break. Um, so that's that's the, really the toughest one. And running back, too, because running back a lot of stuff. Traffic. So, you know, I got to find different ways to maneuver them, their, 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 their bodies and their feet. You know, take this angle, eliminate this angle. Don't jump cut this wide, take, take, jump cut uh, at an angle. So I do a lot. But what helps me out, though, Phil, is that I train every position. You know, and I think that's the edge I have on a lot of other trainers because mm-hmm. most trainers are just DB trainers or just wide out trainers. You know, I train movement. So by me training movement on every position, that's why so many pros come to me because it is it's it's O line versus D line, you know, receiver versus deep to back, running back versus linebacker. You know, um, all you need is just a step separation, mm-hmm. you know, to win that bat- to win that one on one battle. And I I just know I know everything, but I'm also playing. I got to play chess with myself because I train so many wideouts and so many DBs. So I'm trying to figure out ways for the receiver to get off the deep to back while still getting into his ride on time. While, you know, then I might have a defensive back the next hour, and I'm trying to train him how to cover that. So it, it's, it's it's tough because, you know, you get to the NFL, everybody's great, man, and they've all been knowing speed release, outside release, this foot up, this, you know. So I got to be a mastermind with it. And it, it I, I did, though, um, I, I did, um, uh, I do it all the time, but uh uh, Odell did one perfect, man. We're working on this because he was getting held a lot against the Cowboys, and we're working on this all offseason. And he just uh, 
ran it just perfection against the Cowboys. I think was that was that one of the was that one of the plays that I seen on YouTube? Um, man, uh, was it against the Cowboys? It might have been. He, he was on a goal line. It was like a he ran a goal line slant, but you uh-huh. just see him kind of just push up to him. We call it a crab walk. Then he switches his legs again. We call it a crab walk. It's almost looked like like he just skiing, and then he just uh, broke it off. Like, it. But uh, I had just sent him a video of me working on that at my facility. You know, I'm like, yeah, because he needed some more releases. So I'm like, hey, try this right here. Oh, and as I'm going through it, I'm videoing it, but I'm talking through it all the time. You know, and I send it to him, and sure enough, that's one thing about Odell, man. Whatever you uh, he asked for to me to send, he will do. You'll see it in the game every single time. You know, even though we worked on it when, we, when I was down there in LA, it just he he got to see it again. You know the visual, so uh, um, but uh, yeah, but it, it was, it, he ran it to perfection, man. It was just crazy because it was like the night before he asked about that, and I got it to him, and the game was the next. <laughs> That's cool, man. That's cool. So listen, what? So like, I know that you work with football primarily, yeah. but have you ever worked with like any other field-based sports or anything outside of field-based sports, like basketball? Or, or like anything like that, where a change of direction still is key. Uh, actually, football is the only sport I work with. Um, mm-hmm. I did a little bit of lacrosse. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was crazy. Uh, a kid, a kid that a kid played lacrosse. It was a couple years ago, and uh, I was pretty good at it. The, the coach said, uh, "The attention running back. It's a running back with a stick. It was just my running back drills with the." And it translated perfect. Um, that's about it. And I don't have any uh, – yeah, that's only it. Just football, really. <laughs> football, and, and I just touched the crosses a little bit, but not much. But mainly football. I'm so tied up with it. football, I don't know if I can do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> man, that, 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 is, that sounds like me with, uh, with combat sports, man. I'm, I'm the same way, bro. So I get it, man. Um, so with yeah. – with, um, do you do any, like – I know you. I mean, you look like a big dude, man. Like I've seen some of the pictures and stuff. Like, do you do any strength training at all with your guys, or, or are you just basically all field based stuff? Oh, I'm all, I'm all uh, position specific training. I, I um I got a guy down here named uh, uh, Cisco. I, he's a uh, he's a strength and conditioning uh, trainer out here, and nice. he trains all my guys. And uh, and uh, a lot of my pro guys go to a guy named LJ Leo Johnson. Uh, they all go to Leo, cool. but um. But they do all that work. I just yeah. so it's pretty cool. I got I got recovery people, I got a chiropractor, I got I got all those guys from um, drip IV people, PRP people, I got all that stuff down here for them. Nice man, nice. Yeah, that's good. That's good to have a, a team, man, for sure. It's definitely good to have a team. Yeah, it is, man, because a lot of the guys are or get Airbnbs out here uh, mm-hmm. for the off season I stay out here in Houston. You know, I got nightlife out here. Plus, they can train. Nice, nice. So, what has been? Yeah. You worked with a lot of lot of high level guys, man. What's been your biggest accomplishment uh, so far in your coaching career? You know, I get calls from a lot of top guys all the time, and it's just like, "Hey, what's up, man? They need some work, you know." And then we schedule it and whatnot. That's been. But sometimes I look back, I'm like, "Man, you know, ESPN does a top 100." I'm like, "God, I got every year. I got like five guys or seven guys on there." You know, and I think that's crazy because a lot of the guys weren't under the year before, or they were, or a lower number. You know, and it's like the the, the work we put in our off season, the, we we pour a lot of work into the off season, and it translates into the the season. And just watching them apply it, and that's the best. That's that's the thing that I think is watching a guy like for instance, Lonnie Johnson for the Texans worked hard all off season. You know, watching everything we did just translate on the field during the game day. You know, he got moved to safety, but I mean, it's just just watching everything just translate. I'm like, man, you're watching everything we just worked on or using it here or using this here. You know, so that's probably the biggest accomplishment. Um, well, I didn't have a, a, a dream of training pro guys. Uh, it just started like you know, I saw the work, and then you know, it just kind of went after another. You know, and yeah. Le'Veon, Le'Veon told Jet McKinnon, Jet McKinnon told you know, so. Um, uh, everybody, we, you know, so that's just, this is a word of mouth. Everybody I've got is, is either somebody on the team or just, 
just through you know Instagram, they see what's going on and they reach out to me. You know, That's so cool. but uh, they keep yeah, they keep me pretty busy. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt, man. You're doing well. Yeah. What um, I, I've seen the field that you work oh, out on. You. I seen the field that you're working out on. Is that is that is that your field or is that something that like that's a park? Oh, that's my field. Oh, it looks nice. look like it's in a backyard, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's that's yeah. Cool, so man. I got it. Um, yeah, it's it's it's, it's crazy because it's uh it's on a road called Lake Road, uh, and it's at a straight straight down to the end, it's a dead end. Oh, but yeah. I had to do that. I had to do that for privacy, so. All the buildings next to me, right there, is a uh, uh, Mr. Dunn. He uh, he built my whole facility, so he's a commercial developer. So yeah, so he builds all those buildings, and just leases everything out. And he right. had like an acre. He had like one point seven point five one one seven five. Oh, uh, acres worth the land. So and I've been training his son for a long Man. time. Some plays quarterback, bad ass quarterback. Nice. And uh, he just built it. Like dude, built me a field. Yeah, so it's like sixty yards in length, like twenty eight yard, twenty eight width. Uh, 25 foot uh, fencing, you know, netting, got the pads all the way around. You know, it's 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 awesome, man. A lot of the pros love it. It's really really good turf, man. Uh, really good turf. A lot, I see a lot of cheap turf. Mine is it's really good. You got attacking drills on it. Yeah, I mean, you can go barefoot it. Uh, they actually they actually just uh, uh put more. They actually I, I, the guys always come like once a year to kind of groom all that stuff. So they did they did that last Friday. Oh, yeah, it looks right back brand new. Yeah, so um, been having it. I got I, it was built 2015 yet, so I had it six years now. Yo, man, that's a, that's a blessing, bro. Congratulations yeah. on that. Man. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Got lights out there. Got you know speakers out there, man. So it's 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 a good. Dude. Yeah. You man. know, it, it, it's a time because <laughs> I don't know how people know they're out there. You know, like you to see people on the fence that have like the jerseys, whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> but my pro guys are real cool, man. They go, they sign everything. They will sign it. Yeah, I mean, they all sign everything. So I think that's that's great. Yeah, I, I'm glad now that I have <laughs> like you have a you have a private yeah. a private place. But again, it, it only can get so private after a while. You know what I mean? But it's cool because when I saw that, I was like, man. I wanted to ask you if you actually built that out because it looked built out, but I, I didn't want to, you know, come to like that assumption. But definitely cool to see, man. I think that you're doing something a little bit different than, you know, because you you have your you have your skills coaches, you have your strength and conditioning coaches, you have your speed guys, but I feel like you kind of help mold that skills perspective because you are working specific to the position but you're also working again biomechanics you're working on movement quality and that's something that hasn't been done in, in my opinion from what i see i wish i had you when i was playing because it would be a lot more efficient i would be a lot better so congratulations on all your success with that man and, and you're and you're killing the game i i definitely wanted to put you on the podcast just because just seeing that, you know, um, I like people that are leveling up the industry, and obviously you're helping a large amount of elite level uh, football players in general, and also all the way down to the to the high school, and even even some kids too, right? Some some youth athletes. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I got so I got a couple of coaches that work with me, and my Jared he trains a lot of the youth kids, man. A lot of the he just it's crazy because with the younger kids, Phil, we don't work we don't work any position stuff right now because they're young. You don't know what they're gonna play, so yeah. we just work on balance, body control, change direction. And then when we start working position stuff, now they're able to move fluently at the position. Nice. Man. Everything's yeah. about the movement. I'm glad you saw that though. How to get the point A to point B to kick it, get the quickest, you know? Uh, and uh, it's all about, it's all about movement. Every step, every movement has a purpose. And I'm glad that's, that's good. You, I like, <laughs> I like not many, not many see it. Not many, not many. I got to explain it, but like you, you're the one who saw it, like, okay, this is different from everything else, you know? Yeah, Same. yeah, that that was that was the real reason, man. Yeah, that yeah. and it's different, man. Um, I think what what you see and and, and boxers because oh, they're friends with Mighty Mouse. I don't know Mighty Mouse, the UFC dude. Yep. And, uh, and and I was doing some stuff with uh with the octagons, and Mighty Mouse was like, dude, do this right, do that right, quick again, and it was just. So it was just a, a quick tap, tap, tap. But the octagons make you keep your feet inside your body frame. 
Also, the octagons make you everything you do. I do through the octagons is a transition. Dude, the Mighty Mouse like boop, that light bulb clicked in. He was just boop, boom, boom. I was like, there you go. Yeah, yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna ask you a little bit about that. I was gonna ask you because I do have a large amount of, uh, of fighters and coaches that train fighters. Listen to this, like. What do you think would be something good? I know, and I know you work with football players, but what do you think just as that little bit of time that you had with Mighty Mouse, uh, with Demetrius Johnson, what do you think would be beneficial for a fighter in a cage um, from a footwork perspective? Is it like the cone drills? Is it the octagon work, you know, that you do with the football octagons, guys? Octagons. Yeah. Octagons, field. Those octagons, because I got to shoot you a little video when I get to the field, because when the octagons you can go i can have an octagon behind me be here i can push laterally and then flip my hips it's, dude, when it comes to foot speed and flipping the hips those octagons are perfect perfect like i gotta show you some things with them you can do so much man you know what i, I, get, I don't I get to look at these things I, st I start getting like crafty yeah that, that's how i am with a lot of the stuff because i fought for eight years right i, I fought professionally myself so like when you're talking about you know you playing all the positions, I feel the same way with fighting. So like learning those and then understanding biomechanics, I can put it together. But what I do want to do, and this is something that I always kind of do to myself, but when I bring on an individual, I always got to go see them at their work. So I may come out to Houston and come check you out, man, for at least a couple days because I definitely want to see um, you know how you implement okay. that. You know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll make it happen. Okay. Where you, where you, uh, based out of? I'm in Florida. I'm in South Florida. Uh, uh, you're in Miami? I'm in uh, like Fort Lauderdale area. Hell yeah. I got to be out there in July. I go to see, I train Le'Veon Bell out there every year, like seven days. Yeah. Yeah. Come on over, yeah, man. So come I, over. I'll yeah. <laughs> I, I will. Yeah. I come in like mid July. So I go mid July, then I go to LA, train Odell. Those are the only two people I leave for. Usually I'm down here, though. But yeah. yeah. But yeah, you, you come down here any Perfect, man. Nah, perfect. I, perfect. Uh, all right, I'm so to show you some stuff too. Yeah, we'll, I'm, we'll, I'm, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you some things too, Phil. Like when I get to the field, I'm I'm gonna send you something like uh, via a uh, text. Okay, brother. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, that, man. Some, I want y'all gonna send some out there work. Cool, cool, cool. So listen, be oh, yeah, no before we go, I want you to uh, you know make sure that you tell all the listeners, all the viewers, where they can find you, man, because. I know you got a good Instagram. We want to definitely put as much information out for you as possible. Um, go ahead and let them know where they can find you, Twitter, Instagram, all the social media stuff. Okay, my, uh, my, uh, you can find me on Instagram at uh, footwork underscore king. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at footwork underscore king too. Um, and uh, YouTube's at footwork king as well. And um, uh, I was I didn't put most many, I stopped putting YouTube videos is up like a couple months ago but I'm, I'm about to get right back uploading those i got a lot a lot more videos from uh, this off season i'm gonna put up so so my instagram is footwork king footwork under, footwork underscore king uh twitter footwork underscore king two and my, man, my youtube channel footwork king all right man so there we have it episode number 59 thanks for watching and i'll see you next time